We have, you know, a man who is really has a, has the reputation as being the premier advocate for liberty and politics. He says he knows about the homeland security issues, and he also has a plan to take care of these maritime terrorists. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to welcome Congressman Dr. Ron Paul. <laughs> and Sean, thank you so much. Federal agency warns. Issued a warning on radicals on the right. The Department of Homeland Security is warning law enforcement officials about a rise in right-wing extremist activity, the economic recession and ex- election of America's first black president, and the return of a disgruntled, some disgruntled war veterans could swell the ranks of white power militias. The report defines right-wing extremism in the United States as including not just racist or hate groups, but also groups that reject federal authority in favor of state and local authority. You know, you know Congressman, you know, Missouri, the state of Missouri issued a statement that they were they were they wanted to warn police and uh, the person who actually wrote this report, Van Goodsey, has been reassigned after having issued this report and then had to be rescinded, but they wrote a report saying that Missouri law enforcement linked people who support third party candidates and oppose abortion and immigration and gun control as being possible members of militias. And now you have the State Department saying the federal agency is warning against troops returning from home. And i got to make the statement, though, Congressman Paul, that, you know, one of the worst cases of domestic terrorism we had was the Oklahoma City bombing, and Timothy McVeigh was a disgruntled, returning, decorated war hero. Not war hero, but a military veteran. He enlisted in 1988 in the Army, served in the Gulf War, uh, received a bronze star, came home honorably discharged, and then set about perpetrating the worst domestic terrorist act at that point in time in the history of this country. So should we be worried right now? And we do know that some of these guys coming back home, you know, have extreme attitudes. Should we be worried right now about returning veterans and also about third-party leaders? <laughs> Well, I guess we all should, always should be concerned about people who want to commit themselves to violence. I think that's where the line be drawn. But why should uh, people be profiled because they believe that government ought to be local, that they emphasize the Constitution, they believe in the Second Amendment, they are right to life, and, and they get profiled and say, you better watch them, they're suspicious. I thought uh, that was pretty old-fashioned and that we did away with this. But I think the line has to be drawn on violence. But also, a lot of people see that government can commit violence, too. Uh, governments can come in, and sometimes when they have these drug raids and different things, they don't have uh, proper uh, authority and searching search warrants. They bust into houses and hurt people that aren't guilty of anything. So I would say that the line to be drawn is when people use violence to promote their cause, and government's responsible also because sometimes they use violence in an illegal fashion as well. Let's talk about. Let's go. Let's break it down and talk about three separate issues. Let's start first with the government and this program that we now find out that uh, we know for a fact that. The National Security Agency has probably already um, far surpassed the limits that were put on it by Congress in uh, domestic terrorist um, intercepts. They've been intercepting U.S. phone calls. We know this now as a fact. Now they're just going to have to dig around at the bottom of it. But maybe they may say that some of this is going on because they're worried about returning veterans who may be planning some sort of you know, uh, a domestic terrorist act. What do you think about, number one, the fact that the National Security Agency is spying again on you, well, it always has been, but spying at greater depth on U.S. citizens? Well, I think they've been doing it for a long time, Jay, or whoever did it. He attacked left-wing groups, and that was atrocious. And now it might be shifting uh, the target, but it still exists, and we should condemn uh, condemn all of it. Some of us were hopeful that there would be a little bit more respect for civil liberties with the new administration, but uh, so far we haven't seen strong evidence of that. I think they've been weak on curtailing these illegal wiretaps. I don't think they are uh, champions of the cause of habeas corpus, and they're in the courts now fighting for the Bush position on protecting state state secrecy. <laughs> and, uh, so that bothers me. And, of course, one of the reasons that they do so much of this is, uh, I, I think one of the strongest motivations is to collect taxes, but 
Also, this whole whole thing about this uh, crazy war on drugs. You know, we just talked about it earlier with uh, Jim Arkitas. We talked about the fact that, you know, President Obama just sent Black Hawk helicopters down to Mexico to help deal with the drug violence down there. Wow. When we know for a fact that 40 percent, I mean, of supposedly 40 percent of the illegal drugs coming in the United States is supposedly marijuana. And if you flip the switch tomorrow, Congressman, we all know that America would become the largest distributor of marijuana in the world because we grow it so well. <laughs> we do. So it, it's so that issue we got to talk about. Let me just hit you with one more real quick, and that is, you know, when you're talking about states and, and state liberties, do you know that um, Governor Perry made some comments yesterday about the possibility of, of, of utilizing the Tenth Amendment, and that is giving states the right to really succeed from the union. Listen to this. Uh, Texas is a unique place. Uh, when we came in the Union in 1845, uh, one of the uh, issues was that we would be able to, to leave if uh, we decided to do that. And if we're able to leave if we decided to do that, they're threatening to succeed from the nation because they don't support the laws, the tax laws, the anything that this right. president is doing. And if they did so, a lot of Americans don't understand that Texas had, would have the right to do it and then could form five states within its state and we would have now another fence being built along our southern border because I'm sure that Texans who love fences would put one between Texas and the rest of America. What do you think yeah. about that? Well, you know, it's not likely to happen. I find it very fascinating that our governor now is calling for secession or at least hinting to it uh, after all these years of uh, being the strongest supporter for all the programs that George Bush was doing. So uh, I, I think this is a a sign that uh, some of us have, uh, have been involved in this movement toward limited government for so long and limited taxation. They're deciding to join us. So like yesterday, you know, the conventional mainstream politicians were all over the place, which is fine. That shows that the that uh, this this movement is growing. But uh, once again, uh, I don't think that, that is likely to happen. But I do think the principle of secession has been uh, maligned, uh, mainly because of what happened in the Civil war period but in the early years it was assumed that they came to the states came together voluntarily and it was assumed that they could leave voluntarily and especially in the new north uh, east the new england states vermont in particular really believed uh, that was where the early secessionist movements occurred uh, because they couldn't stand living with the south and they wanted to get away from them and they thought they thought the south was too dominant so i think it's an interesting discussion but it's not a practical discussion i i don't think but well, the whole thing is is sometimes Sometimes when I look at what they do in Austin to me, I say, boy, am I going to feel so much better by just allowing Austin to run my life rather than Washington. <laughs> but I, I still would argue that the intention of the Constitution was to allow most of the laws to be written locally. And back to the drug war, if the states uh, were uh, in charge of regulating the use of marijuana, I think we'd all be better off. Uh, can, we, can we talk <laughs> about that? For, let's talk about it for just one second, Congressman, because I don't know if you know this. I've been talking about this on the air, and no one seems to want to pick it up and run with it. You do know that, and I'm going to say this and, and hear me out, but I'm going to call you this, Congressman Paul, you're a drug dealer. You, along with the President of the United States, the rest of Congress and Senate, because do you know that for the last 30 years, on May 10th of this year, is the anniversary of a program that was sponsored by the United States government, where for the last 30 years, it's been distributing marijuana to 12 patients. The marijuana is grown at the University of Mississippi. It's canned and stamped by the USDA. For 30 years, every single month, the United States government has distributed marijuana to 12 people. Now it's down to four because eight of them have died. They are still doing it today and at the same time arresting people for having less marijuana than they actually distribute. And this program has been in existence for 30 years. It started under the Carter administration. Under the Bush administration, it was limited, but it has continued. And I'm one of the you know, biggest mouths in America saying, how dare this government give a product, give a medicine to patients that they claim is efficacy because they put the USDA stamp on it, and then say to Montel Williams, no, screw you, you got to live pain, you have to be in pain, and you, you can't get pain medication, and we're going to give it to somebody else. So, Congress, maybe you could help me. Let's find a lawyer who could help me sue the United States government to stop discriminating against me and allow me the same treatment that it's afforded other patients in this country. What do you think about that? Well, I, I think you point out the pure hypocrisy of most of what government does. You know, they're supposed to protect uh, uh, contracts, and yet they're interfering in the contracts all the time. They're supposed to protect honest 
money, and they become the biggest counterfeiters in the world. And they claim marijuana doesn't work, but they give the then drug to it. American patients. It's yeah. crazy. The, continu- the, the conversation is going to continue. Thank you so much, Congressman, for being with us. Another- Montel Across America.